Welcome back to Regaining the Balance. This is Matt. Today we will be uh, reading from a translated document from 1573 about the awesome deluge of water and lightning storms that happened to Constantinople, causing the ruins of major buildings of unfathomable value where the life of the great lord was in danger. With the peace agreement, uh, with an additional piece at the end, with the peace agreement of the lordship of Venice and the great Turk. Sir, in my last letters, I promised to give you a recount of the most notable things that happened in Constantinople, to which I do not want to fail the present occasion to investigate in Italy for the obligations I have to your house, as well as your merits and virtues. You will hear then, sir, that what happened then was an awesome case and worthy to be communicated to everyone in the whole world as new to the memory of men. It was on the 29th of last month when it started raining, and this is in uh, 1573, uh, it was the 29th of last month when it started raining terribly and continuously and lasted until the evening of the following Wednesday. From Tuesday evening until Wednesday, the thunder and lightning did, didn't stop roaring. Translator's note here, uh, the next word is uh, the old English word for uh, faggot or faggettes in French, which means a bundle of sticks. And it's strange that they use this to describe the, uh, as like fireballs raining down on the city from the sky. Uh, they could, uh, could they be describing like a fachets in use or something like that? You see fachets all over the place and the fachets looks like a, a bundle of rods, a bundle of sticks. Uh, who knows? That's just a, just throwing it out there. But uh, it's interesting that they use this word to describe fireballs coming out of the sky. So I'll just want to do a throw that out there for you guys. And so fireballs or faggots fell from the sky. We counted 80 causing tremendous damage all over. And the truth is that it seemed like God wanted to destroy through marine waves. And then here's another translator's note. Um, the French word you here used is uh, onde. Okay, um, which basically means energy or like energy waves, you know, that kind of thing. It's a weird word, word to use uh, because when you when you talk about a marine wave, that would be a vague in French. And so the fact that they use onde is a very particularly interesting word. One of the things that I find interesting about doing translations is that you pick out little things in the writings because people aren't perfect and... Uh, and or they're honest about something, or they're or this is a different way of saying things. But you, you, I see documents, um, you know, older than this that use the appropriate vag for uh, marine waves, for instance. So I think it's interesting. You have fireballs falling out of the skies, and marine, you know, energy waves or whatever else hitting the uh, the city itself. So, anyways, continuing. Um, so uh, the truth that seemed like God wanted to destroy through marine waves and exterminate through celestial fire for the vengeance of our errors because in the whole country the waters flooded so bad that it took away whole houses, destroyed vineyards, farm buildings with more than 6,000 burrows of wheat, not counting the infinite amount of people and other goods consumed by such a deluge. This overflow that was going over the wall of the Lord's arsenal took away all the boats that were there. It seemed like the windows of heaven were once again opened up for our final ruin. The galleys went and crashed against a number of round vessels that were anchored and were all destroyed and everything was floating. And uh, here we go. Here's the story about the saving of the Turk Lord. The night the Lord was found on the site called the Seven Towers. Our Lord God spared him greatly since... Despite the affliction the water caused, he hadn't been rescued. A little later, he would have been dead like the other ones. But Thagat Aga, chief of the Janissaries, and that's an Ottoman, like, ground forces, you know, uh, soldier, uh, predicted the great danger where his master was. So he went with a horse, hiking through the water up to the gorge, taking the horse with him to give him to his master, but on its way back, he found that the water had risen impetuously and the horse stumbled and fell to the bottom. In the face of all this, Fagad never lost courage and with the help of other of his spurs and a great cry, the horse came back up full force and swam to where the bottom was shallower and couldn't go back to where he left his lord. Finally, he reached the place where the Ramoulins were with the lord's vessel who didn't know anything about the danger he was in and very rapidly said uh, Fagat jumped into the vessel and the power of the oars went through the hill 
where the waters have never been to reach their master faster. So in other words, um, the flood had risen so high that they were literally taking boats through areas that water had never been. So uh, let's see here. Um, so much so that they got to the seven. Okay, yeah. So the power of oars went through the hill uh, to reach their master faster. So much so that when they got to the seven towers, the water had reached the first floor of the palace and the Lord was full of fear and deprived of any hope to be rescued. He hid under a window uh, for which he would be extracted from uh, by the vessel taken to the Syrile. Uh, here's another translator. Um, oh, yeah. So they extracted from the vessel and taken to the Syrile. Sy- 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 <laughs> and that means a harem. So they, they extracted him and took him to his harem. Lucky him, I guess. Huh? <laughs> Barely alive. For the great fear that he had conceived, as soon as he went into the vessel, he saw in front of his eyes the uh, palace taken by the wa- uh, water waves, a great signal of God's mercy only for the monarchs of infidels. Maybe in the future to advise him of separating the fake law of Muhammad. <laughs> and again, you know, these are very contextual or contemptuous texts during these times because this is when the rise of the, you know, the, not too long ago was when... Uh, um, the Ottomans had taken over Constantinople, and so and, and there's definitely w- war raging on between them and other European powers, mainly the uh, Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. Um, so, you know, obviously we're going to find things like that in here. Those of who, of necessity, went to help their lord were compensated by ample gifts and were risen in rank. In between other notable things that happened in this deluge was that the great part of the mountain was taken by the violence of the water, and it was discovered a portico supported by four beautiful columns with a cross on top that had been buried so many years in the said mountain, admired by everyone. But some think that the fall of the Greek empire, this portico was buried by the barbarians as they despised the Christians. Damage of the deluge was considered to be enormous, exceeding three million in gold and a loss of infinite number of people. And because the word in town was that the Lord had been drowned, but the day after the deluge had stopped, he appeared in public, going straight to the main mosque to give grace to his false prophet, Muhammad. (laughs) Here we go. Articles of the treaty between the Venetian lords and Turk. The treaty states all prisoners and slaves from both sides will be free. The Turk was obliged to restore all seas merchandise to the merchants and as well as giving away as well as giving away Naples of Romania and Malvesi, which of fortresses have been dismantled. Negotiating this, the Venetian lords agreed to give three hundred thousand coins in three years, therefore a hundred thousand coins in a in year a year. Uh, and that trade and commerce was free as it was before, which, of course, the Venetians love that. So here we go. That's what we got, guys. Uh, the interesting story of the deluge of Constantinople. This is definitely part of the sort of uh, collection of different um, things happening here in the 1500s, which definitely seems to be a, a recurring event in history, where things just kind of go crazy uh, in the weather and all kinds of different stuff, um, if you guys haven't checked out the uh, uh, the 15th century, the, or the, the 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 century that where everything changed video that I did, you should check it out because there's, there's definitely there's so many things happening on the world map, so to speak, um, by certain players, and we'll be getting into that uh, really soon. So uh, thank you very much for joining me with this. And, um, you know, if uh, you guys took a, you know, we're taking a look at some of these pictures while I was reading, and you can see just how uh, messed up Constantinople definitely got. Um, but, uh, you know, very interesting. Um, another little thing where we find more um, disasters happening in a uh, time period here in the 1500s. So we have the the burying of ancient Rome in the 1530, and then a month later the Saint Saint Felix flood, which killed 100 to 400 thousand people, buried and destroyed entire towns, and uh, you know, and I got more. <laughs> I got a lot more coming your way, guys, because this is there's a lot of these um, uh, accounts in this period of time between the 1530s all the way up to about 1600, where. Um, it's just one after the other. So thank you again for joining me. And uh, if you guys like the video, hit the like button. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And, um, you know, leave a comment or whatever if you want. And uh, otherwise, uh, much love to you guys. 
and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.